I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons, my Biblio Spran, Biblio Howlers, and Biblio Mansers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means so much to me. Hi everyone, Patek here. Today's video will be my August wrap up. And in the month of August, I managed to finish uh, five novels, even though uh, my ambitious August TBR was to read eight or nine books. And obviously I failed at that, but you know what? It's okay because this month, uh, the month of August is all about quality, quality over quantity, because every book that I read in the month of August all of them were awesome. And the first book that I finished in the month of August, it was Until the Last by Mike Shackle. This is uh, the third and final book in the Last War trilogy. And the Last War trilogy has always been one of my favorite ongoing series. And now I finally finished it. And I can safely say that this is one of my favorite series of all time. But I would like to admit also that uh, the final book, in my opinion, is the weakest of the entire trilogy. The first book is We Are the Dead, the second book is A Fool's Hope, and also the third book is Until the Last. And Until the Last is still super good. It's just not as good as We Are the Dead or A Fool's Hope. A Fool's Hope, in my opinion, is absolutely incredible. But Until the Last as a concluding book, I think uh, from my perspective, it is way too full with uh, actions, especially in the first half, considering that the book itself is about 800 pages long, if I'm not mistaken, but it is a very thick book. The non-stop actions and battle sequence for about the first 400 pages, even though they were very well written, Mike Shackle write really great action scenes. After a while, I felt that the pacing became a bit unbalanced because everything is all actions, actions, and actions. I would have preferred a bit more characterizations and characters talking to each other. But that's just my opinion. In the end, I think this book is still very good. But if there is one thing that in my opinion was quite disappointing from until the last it is the final boss the final villain itself the final villain raku has been teased since the first book we are the dead and the confrontation with raku himself well it was just too short it's so short it's only a few pages long and in my opinion raku was not uh, well developed enough to be the final villain of this trilogy there were plenty plenty of villains throughout the trilogy so much more well written and so much more memorable than the final boss himself. Other than that, I have nothing to criticize about Until the Last. It is still, as I said, a very good conclusion to the trilogy and the ending itself is pretty satisfying. I love what Mike Shackle has done with this trilogy and I definitely look forward to reading whatever he writes next. Then the next book that I finished in the month of August, it was one of the most surprising book of the year uh, for me and that is Sons of Darkness by Gaurav Mohanty. Yes, this is the first book in the Rack of Rita series and I loved it. I loved it so much. I think this one will definitely become the best debut of the year and this one can be considered as Mahabharata mixed with A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin, Malazan Book of the Fallen by Stephen Erickson, and The First Law by Joe Abercrombie. And you can definitely see the inspirations inside this book. But I already did a full extensive spoiler review for Sons of Darkness and if you want to know more about my thoughts regarding this book, I highly recommend you to check out, well, that review. But if you don't feel like checking out the review, I highly recommend you to please check out this book. It is absolutely amazing and I don't think that many people has read this book yet. I think this one deserves so much more recognition. Not only I consider Sons of Darkness the best debut of this year, I also think that this novel is one of the best fantasy debut of all time. And Plus, this actually got me interested in reading Mahabharata. Seriously, there is so much uh, plotline and twists and turns inside this book that surprised me in a good way. And I need to know. I need to know more about these characters. I need to know more about their origins, even though I know that this one is a grim dark, grim dark retelling of Mahabharata mixed with the inspirations that I just mentioned. But yeah, I'm certainly interested in reading Mahabharata now. And I actually already got the book now. So yeah, make sure to check out Sons of Darkness by Gaurav Mohan. So Sons of Darkness was already absolutely amazing and then the next book that I read after that it was even more insane and you know what you know what it is right and that is Speaking Bones by Ken Liu. This is 1,000, more than 1,000 pages long, and it is the conclusion to the Dandelion Dynasty. Yes, the Dandelion Dynasty quartet is now finished and I have waited, I have waited five years to actually read this series and now I am done with this. I am sad to say goodbye uh, to the Dandelion Dynasty. The characters inside this series, all of them have become so real to me. And just like Sons of Darkness, I already made a full spoiler review about uh, 
Speaking bones and also why you should read the entire the Dandelion Dynasty series. But I think after reading all of Ken Liu's books, I think that he is seriously a genius. Whether it's short stories, novellas, translation, or novels, he excels at all of them. All of them. And in my opinion, he is really one of the most underrated science fiction and fantasy authors right now. Ever since I finished Speaking Bones, I just can't seem to move on from it. I'm kind of in a book hangover, in a serious hangover, because of finishing The Dandelion Dynasty. So yes, uh, check this book out, check this series out. If there is any series I read from the beginning to the end this year, and which one I would highly recommend the most, it would be the Dandelion Dynasty. And then the fourth book that I finished in the month of August, it was The Kingdom of Bones. The Kingdom of Bones by Philip C. Quenchell. This is uh, the fifth book in the Echo Saga series, a series that I've been enjoying so much, but uh, I've heard a lot of great things about Kingdom of Bones. Kingdom of Bones, even according to the author, is where he started to feel confident in his writing, and I can definitely see that in this book. But even though I agree that his writing in Kingdom of Bones is the best so far in terms of quality, uh, the best so far in the series, but I also must say that I don't think I enjoyed this overall uh, better than uh, the previous book, The Fall of Never Dark. I think The Fall of Never Dark is still a better book. The Fall of Never Dark had the advantage of surprising me in plenty of ways, especially, well, I cannot talk about it because these are pl uh, sp uh, plot twists. So yeah, I cannot talk about uh, these revelations, but anyway, these revelations in Fall of Never Dark definitely surprised me and it it immediately elevated the book uh, for me. And the introduction of the new characters in Fall of Never Dark after a while felt so well written. As for Kingdom of Bones, I absolutely love the second half. The second half of Kingdom of Bones was incredible, but I had a bit of an issue in reading the first half. I think the first half, uh, the pacing and the stuff that's happening in the story felt a bit uninteresting or uneven sometimes. I feel like sometimes it's so compelling, but sometimes it's okay. But overall, I do think that this is still a great book, and I think this one, uh, the Echo Saga, need to be talked about more in the fantasy fandom. There is a bit of a weird thing regarding the Echo Saga, like, I, I just don't understand how this could happen. I mean, this book, this series, is super highly praised, and there are so many reviews uh, for it on Amazon, but somehow, not just not that many people talk about it. It is kind of crazy and the author actually has sold like hundreds of thousands of books for the Echo Saga series. So yeah, I don't know why this is possible. But anyway, I look forward to reading the next book uh, this month. I look forward to finishing the second trilogy in the nine book series this month. Then the final novel that I finished in the month of August, it was a reread and this is for Shadows of Self by Brandon Sanderson. This is the second book in Miss Bourne Wax and Wayne series or Miss Bourne Era 2. So yeah, this is the sequel to Alley of Law and in my opinion on this reread, I think just like the Alley of Law, I think these books, uh, the Miss Bourne Era 2, just works better on the second read in my opinion. I mean, having the right expectation on what kind of stories we are getting in this, uh, in this series because it is so different compared to Miss Bourne Era 1 really helps a lot in improving my reading experience. Experience. Plus, now that I've finished reading all the Casimir books, all the Casimir books so far, reading Miss Bond Era 2 actually proved to be quite interesting because there are actually plenty of Casimir implications already introduced in Miss Bond Era 2 that I didn't know back then because I read Miss Bond Era 2 immediately after I finished reading Miss Bond Era 1. And back then, obviously, I don't know much about Casimir yet. But on this reread, because I have read all the Casimir books and I've read Miss Bond Trilogy, the first era, like three times now. All the Casimir stuff in Shadows of Self or everything that's related to them are so interesting. I love reading about them. Plus, Wax, Wayne, Marasi, and especially Steris became a much better character to care about in Shadows of Self. And also, there were plenty, there were plenty of things that kind of harkens back to Miss Bond Era 1. I cannot talk about them because they are spoilers just in case you haven't read Miss Bond Era 2, but they made me emotional, they made me happy, and I felt giddy just reading about them. I love Miss Bond. Miss Bond Skadriel, uh, the world of Miss Bond, is like a, like a home to me, despite everything awful that is happening in this world. But I think overall, this is a great book with an emotional ending, and I loved it. I love Shadows of Self more on the second read than my first time reading through it. So that's all the novels that I finished in the month of August. And as always, please remember that if I don't have a video review for any of the books I mentioned, I have written a full spoiler-free review for every one of them. And I will leave the links 
uh, to these reviews in the description down below. As for the manhua or manga series that I finished in the month of August, I finished, well, I, I kind of DNF one manga series and I finished one manhua series. So for the manga that I DNF, it was for Golden Kamui. Now, this is not because a uh, Golden Kamui is bad. It's certainly not, but it's so different from my expectation and it's so different from what I need to read right now. I really thought that Golden Kamui will be a fantasy series. It's not. It is truly a historical fiction, at least from the first three volumes that I've read so far. And it is so well researched as far as I know. The thing is, right now I'm just not in the mood to read historical fiction manga. Yeah, that's really the only issue that I have with Golden Kamui. So one day when I'm in the right reading mood for it, I will definitely come back to this one because I kind of love the characters already. And my main issue with Golden Kamui is really just because I'm not in the right reading mood. For the manhua series that I finished, it was solo leveling. Yes, I finally finished reading solo leveling and I loved it, but with a caveat. I read solo leveling from the beginning again up to the end of the Manhua series. I love everything about it, especially uh, the artworks in season two. I think it was incredible. I think the artists did such an amazing job in illustrating uh, the light novel to Manhua. I mean, I think it is kind of undeniable now that solo leveling is popular, is very popular because of the illustrations, because of the Manhua series, and the artists did an amazing job with it. Now, the ending, I, I heard plenty of bad things about the ending and I will have to agree that although I wouldn't call it as bad, but it's not finished and it is. It is not finished. Even though the Manhua series is finished, apparently there were still plenty of chapters that hasn't been adapted. Now, I don't know why this happened. Uh, I know that the artist passed away and this could actually be the reason. I haven't done enough research on it, but this could actually be the reason why the Manhua series ended on that chapter. It's still, it's still kind of a satisfying conclusion, but just not satisfying enough. And I think I will have to make some time to actually read the light novel so that I can find out the real true ending to this story. But either way, even though I know that the Manhua series is technically not the ending to solo leveling, I still would highly recommend you to check out this Manhua series. I loved it so much and I know that the main character gets overpowered really fast, but I think this is the kind of overpowered main character story done right. And yeah, it can be done right, just like solo leveling. This is proof in my opinion. And I cannot wait to watch the anime adaptation for solo leveling. Probably the anime adaptation will actually adapt the entire light novel. And if that happens, it will adapt the true ending of solo leveling as well. And I look forward to it. I hope that the anime adaptation will be as amazing as the manhua series. And I know that this will be a difficult task, but well, I will keep my fingers crossed that this will happen. But that's all the novels and manga and manhua series that I finished in the month of August. So that's five novels and uh, one manhua series from beginning to the end and one manga series being DNF. Overall, uh, other than the DNF, as I said, it was because of my reading mood. I was not in the right reading mood for it. But overall, I think August is such an awesome reading month. It is definitely a matter of quality over quantity. And my book of the month in August will have to be Speaking Bones. I would love to choose Sons of Darkness, but I think Speaking Bones just slightly win over it. It was such a masterful culmination to the series and I don't think I could choose another book as my favorite book of the month other than Speaking Bones. So yeah, that's it for me today. Do let me know how many books you finished in the month of August and which one was your favorite. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons and my new bibliomancers, Casey and Lee.